Cannabis News Florida, and we're here at the Florida Medical Cannabis Convention and Exposition. And actually, the person sitting right next to me here and right next to me in my booth is Peggy. Peggy is with Greenleaf Accounting. Uh, what a great name for a cannabis company, uh, can accounting cannabis, cannabis company. So, Peggy, uh, we just met for the first time. Uh, yes. We do not have a relationship. No. Uh, although we're work working on it. Yes. Okay. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your company and why you started the company. Okay, um, um, actually I've been an accountant for over 30 years and I noticed that the cannabis space was really lacking in that area. There are a lot of um, accountants that really don't want to work with cannabis companies. Absolutely. So I've decided to take my expertise and transition my company over to 100% cannabis. That's all I work with anymore. I don't have any um, clients that are outside of the space. So with that being said, the, the cannabis industry is a very broad industry. Yes. You have the people that are growing, and especially in the state of Florida, you got the growers, the processors, and the dispensaries are all one. So that kind of limits the, the, the amount of clients they have. But there are other clients, like doctors and people who support the industry, that do have problems if you're collecting money from cannabis-related companies. So tell us how you help those type of companies. Okay. Um, actually, my biggest thing is helping those clients stay compliant. Mm -hmm. um, we have, there's lots of taxes, excise taxes, not necessarily here in the state of Florida, mm -hmm. but I have, I have clients outside the state of Florida. Oh, good, okay. So um, I can work with anybody in the 50 states. I don't do anything international yet, but mm -hmm. um, anybody across the country. Um, really, compliance is the main issue. We want to make sure that people are complying to 280E, to doing their taxes correctly, and they're not getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. So do you find in other states, because since we're vertical, you don't have the, the number of people, actually, people touching the plant, but those uh, dispensaries or processors in, mm -hmm. other, in other states have that same 280E problem than, as the growers do here then? Actually, yes. So there's a bigger um, because there are more. There aren't as vertically integrated outside of the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. There are bigger problems outside the state of Florida. Are there really? Okay. There really are because there are more plant touching companies that don't have that integration where they have the grow side. The grow side is a lot easier to comply with taxes. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about so the ones that don't have the grow side have mm -hmm. less of a problem. There's no question about that. But there still are, could be issues relating to accounting and making sure you're doing it correctly. Absolutely. So let's take, a, for instance, a, a, a medical marijuana physician mm -hmm. who has transitioned his practice to 100%. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. You have those who have uh, within their own, well, let's say they've started a new practice and the practice is just for basically getting getting the patient's cards to them, do they have more of a problem than a regular medical practice? Absolutely, and the biggest problem that those physicians have is that they're more cash intensive businesses than a regular physician's office. I don't want to say regular, but right. a non-cannabis physician's mm -hmm. office. And they have um, other compliance issues with malpractice insurance, um, and we do want to make sure that they have the same opportunities and the same level of compliance as other companies to make sure that they stay out of trouble as well. And you want to make sure that you're a, they're able to get the services Absolutely. And, and, and you've done this for a while now, yes. okay? So you have the connections, as I would say, you don't necessarily just hire uh, an account, but you hire somebody who is a trusted advisor that has the connections to be able to do payroll, to be able to do uh, b banking, which yes. is a very important part. Mm -hmm. And since you've worked with companies throughout the United States and the state of Florida, mm -hmm. you have connections to be able to help these people. Absolutely, out. and I can put them in contact with, and actually part of my onboarding process, if, if I take on a new client who um, doesn't have banking, I require all of my clients to bank. Mm -hmm. It's just safer, and I don't want to handle a lot of cash. So just part of our onboarding process, we can also onboard them directly onto a bank and a payroll processing service as well. So uh, we didn't rehearse this, by the way, so, <laughs> you know, so I'm putting Peggy on the spot. But tell us a, a, a nightmare story for a client that you've dealt with, maybe outside the state of Florida, because I, the state of Florida is limited. You have 15 companies and that's basically all. But outside the state of Florida, as far as getting 
find it going in and helping somebody and I'm saying, oh my God, what's happening? <laughs> Okay. Don't mention any names. Don't mention Don't mention, any names. Just give me the oh my God we'll, situation we'll as, you, the as, as, as you started talking with them. So um, one situation was a um, one of the problems that a lot of companies have that have been in the space for about a year or so is that their internal controls start to lag. Mm -hmm. okay. I would agree. Mm -hmm. So what they had starting out was fine when they were very small, but as they grew, their internal controls didn't grow with them. So mm -hmm. there, there was a lot of compliance issues there and some things can get um, done improperly with things like missing documentation. Um, sometimes cash goes missing. Uh, as, a, as accountants, and we both know, because I, I do, as I say, I am an accountant, but I don't practice, thank God. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, with that being said, those are big. Fi when when cash goes missing, it's it's a big problem. It's a big problem, and it's a really big problem because the IRS has ways of of detecting the fact that you're not reporting all of your income. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you take cash out of the business before you actually, m you know, record it into mm -hmm. the business, there's ways for. I'm also a fraud investigator. So oh my God! Uh oh, watch out. <laughs> so there are techniques that we use that we can detect when cash is missing, when our in when income is being underreported, and that's where people get in trouble with sure. the IRS. And in certain circumstances, again, not mentioning any names, but people can go to jail. Ah, jail. A, a nice place to be able to get room and board for free yes. for an extended period of time. Extended period of time and they will liquidate all of your assets for you. So you have no problems? No problem whatsoever. No assets, no liabilities, and yep. basically somebody else is paying for your room and board. Absolutely. What a wonderful place to live. Absolutely. All you give up is a little bit of freedom. That's right. Just a little <laughs> bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. So yeah, so there there are situations out there. So what about, uh, the again, going into the medical marijuana mm -hmm. physician's office, and I, I deal a lot with the medical marijuana physicians, what are a couple of things that they need to know when opening up a practice that would that would help them to make sure that they're doing things correctly? Um, making sure that they are using an industry specific accountant. That's mm -hmm. one of the biggest one of the biggest um, things that they can do to make sure that they are compliant. Um, we know the industry better than a non-cannabis accountant. We understand the intricacies. Um, need to make sure that you're setting up the correct entity structure as far as if you're gonna be a, a you know a corporation or if you're just an LLC. You need to make sure that um, you talk with a corporate attorney who can get you the correct entity structure because mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot of, um, the IRS is very particular about if you have multiple entities, are they, legitimate multiple right, entities exactly. or are you trying to evade 280E and then plus if you have an LLC which a lot of people don't really realize is that if you have an LLC and the IRS comes to audit you they're coming to audit you personally as well right exactly so that's one thing that you would want to want to look at also making sure that your malpractice insurance covers you if you are dealing with cannabis because some of them just like payroll processors right. and banks will ditch you if you start touching anything to do with cannabis. Right. So, I mean, there there are some things that, are, you know, starting your practice, integrating your practice, mm -hmm. that you really need to, I mean, the account you're using, nothing wrong with that for your personal taxes, but when it comes to the business of, of cannabis, a medical marijuana physician, or if you're outside of it, maybe you're doing construction or right. that type of stuff. You really need to speak with somebody who knows the insides and outs, not only an accountant, but also an attorney. Absolutely. So, so it's important to have your, what I would call, cannabis team lined up mm -hmm. uh, as, as, things, as things happen that somebody who has experience to be able to make it work. So. Absolutely, and absolutely positively, if you get into the situation like we were talking about before with somebody who's maybe not doing things correctly because their internal controls mm -hmm. started to lag a little bit and the IRS does contact you, the moment you get a notice from the IRS, you need to make sure you contact a tax attorney that is familiar with cannabis. Right, and, and if you're dealing in that space with a company, you know, you're gonna be tagged. I mean, you know, it's it, it just, it just, especially if you're touched 
Not so much if you're not touching the product, but if you are touching the product, you can probably count on somebody at least sending you a letter down the road. Mm -hmm. So anyway, with that, uh, we got uh, a chock full day here. So if you, again, I mentioned earlier, if you are a physician, starting at one o'clock, it's all about physicians and the medical practice of cannabis and kind of tips about treating patients, what's new, what's going on, current research. So if you can, come down to the Rosen Center Hotel. Uh, the afternoon session starts at 1, uh, and you'll definitely enjoy it. And not only that, but you'll be able to see Peggy and myself, and we are right next to each other. So hopefully you'll be able to come down, and we will see you later. Peggy, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. And uh, we will see you uh, later on, and uh, come on down to see us. Bye-bye.